I think it is inevitable that some form of metaverse will be the dominant form of human interaction over the course of 20 years for sure. My name is Brian Schuster and I'm the Chief Executive Officer and co-founder of Otherverse and Otherverse Digital. At Otherverse, we are a software development company. And what we develop primarily is we build metaverses. So we build our own metaverse and we develop metaverse technology. And we're also involved in building a platform. And that platform is designed so that third parties can easily use our tools, use our systems to build their own metaverses. That's the idea, is uh, a wide range of uh, metaverses that all interoperate on a single platform. Advantages of this type of system include things like where a user, a, an entity, a, an institution, a, an entrepreneur, they can create a metaverse and they can participate in um, control lists. So for example, Harvard University may say, we're gonna subscribe to the humanoid avatar with this type of clothing requirements and this type of closet. And then another university can come along and say, well, we're also gonna subscribe to the same list. And so everybody doesn't need to recreate the wheel as it, as it were. You can leverage existing lists of access controls um, and you can also cross-pollinate. And what I mean by that is if you have a game, you want to build a game, but you're a single person studio, you can build a mini game and you could attach this mini game to another mini game and another mini game. And so something that's never existed before is this interoperable, again, there's that word where users can move from one, one place to another and, and, and companies can exchange data uh, uh, and trade these kinds of tools and, and pieces and components to assemble a much more intricate and involved kind of internet of games and internet of reality. The problem with metaverses today is to go to a metaverse, you have to download the metaverse app and you need to create an account and you need to get everything set up and oftentimes you need to pay or you need to engage some challenges um, before you can even access what this so-called metaverse. It, it's a huge pain point for people to have to, to have to do this. Just imagine if every time you had to click to go to another website, uh, you had to download a new web browser and then you had to configure that web browser. What Otherverse does is we've solved this problem by taking all of these different issues and ways of doing things and put it into a simple, easy, fun experience. It's a single browser, a metaverse browser, which we call Aeon. So the Aeon browser, you download that one browser and then you can just click around. Um, you're familiar with the interface. It's already set up. Your account is already established and you can go to any of the metaverses that are on the platform. You can go to any of the establishments that are within metaverses that are on the platform. You can search for metaverses and all of them exist on the platform. And so we believe that we've solved the main challenge because instead of creating a metaverse that's a standalone little garden, we've created a platform and everybody's welcome to come on, everybody's welcome to bring their metaverse, and then anybody who's engaged in any metaverse on the platform has access to all of the metaverses on the platform. Otherverse has created a new layer of the internet. This is really what I mean when I say that Otherverse is designed to be the internet of metaverses. We've got a layer which acts as a platform, we've built all the plumbing, all of the infrastructure and architecture and protocols to make all of it work and the end users never need to see anything about that. And that's the promise of the metaverse is to make everything much easier, like much simpler and therefore much more rewarding and fulfilling where I couldn't go to a concert now with my brother, for example, who lives in Philadelphia with an enormous amount of trouble. But in a metaverse, we absolutely could. And then depending on the rules, we might be able to fly our way out, <laughs> which is a lot of fun. The way that I imagine this unfolding is initially the metaverse is something that users are going to access for entertainment, uh, for uh, immediate value, um, meaning they want to bring a business in, they want to uh, create virtual goods, virtual services. 
and you'll access it through a number of different devices, your phone, your computer screen. For those of us that have a headset, you access through a virtual reality headset. And as the technology progresses, more people are gonna join the metaverse. I think it's gonna happen very quickly. And once that transition happens, the whole way we access information and we deal with the web is gonna to start to transition. The web is gonna become accessible more and more only through your use of metaverse. What we want to achieve here is community and a community that is uplifting and positive and is reinforcing these, these friendship and tribal innate features of humans where we want to help other humans. Where we are right now, is we've spent several years working up this Aeon generation of our software. And we're in phase one alpha testing. So the avatars themselves look amazing. They're the most photorealistic. They're the, and when I say photorealistic, I mean, it's sometimes hard to distinguish that it's an avatar and not a real person. Down to the point where your avatar is sitting in the hot tub and it will start to perspire. There's all kinds of business opportunities from small to huge, from individual entrepreneurs to really large-scale enterprises. Like when we first open the doors, I know for sure DJs come in and they immediately make money because every club that opens wants to hire the DJs. And of course the clubs that open, um, they're able to earn revenue either by selling tickets, they can have uh, comedians, they can have um, uh, bands, they can have high-end DJs come in and sell tickets uh, for dance parties. There's so much efficiency, and that's really, I use that term in an economic sense, which means you get so much more value, so much more easily for, from doing things in a metaverse way than doing them in the traditional way or the internet way. It could be the best thing for humans. We really might be able to control climate this way. We really could bring costs down and elevate the standard of living around the globe, but it needs to be done very thoughtfully because I definitely see a time when humans basically are inextricably linked to the metaverse. I do see that the progression of humans from being very rarely engaged with technology to now almost never disengaged from their phones and their devices. And this progression is going to continue. Um, and so if you extend it to its logical conclusion, it's yes, we live, we will live in a metaverse and it could be a great thing.